In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of ionization energy. The video is suitable for all of the major exam boards, and I really hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so because it really, really helps me out. Okay, so the first thing really we need to say is what is ionization energy? So you can see I've got that at the top left there. It's the energy required to remove a mole of electrons from a mole of gaseous species. So whatever you're ionizing, it has to be in the gas state. So we need to think about, well, why is energy needed to do this? So obviously you've got the negative electrons in the shells and you've got protons in the nucleus, so the nucleus is positive. So there's electrostatic attraction between the negative electrons and the positive nucleus. And the other thing worth mentioning at this point is that all ionization energies are endothermic processes because energy is needed to make the process happen. So their enthalpy change is always positive. So for the purpose of the video, I'm going to use boron as my example. And I've chosen boron because it hasn't got too many electrons, otherwise we'd be here forever. So it's got five electrons, therefore boron has five ionization energies. So the beginning of the process is called the first ionization energy. So you can see I've written up here the definition for first ionization energy. That's the energy required to remove a mole of electrons from a mole of gaseous atoms. So we've got the boron atom here, it's got its five electrons and obviously it's got its five protons in the nucleus. So we can write the chemical equation to accompany that process. So we're starting with the boron atom, but it's got to be in the gas phase, and we turn it into a boron one plus ion, gas still, and there's that electron that's been removed. So in the equation, we've got a mole of gaseous boron atoms. We've created a mole of gaseous boron one plus ions, and we've removed a mole of electrons. And I've just looked up the value for this process in a data book, so I'm going to write the enthalpy change for the process. The delta H for this process is plus 800.6 kilojoules per mole. And obviously that plus sign there refers to it being an endothermic process. So obviously after the first ionization energy comes the second, so that's defined as the energy required to remove a mole of electrons from a mole of gaseous one plus ions. So there's my representation of the gaseous one plus ion for boron. So why is it one plus? We've got five protons, but only four electrons. So the equation for that process would look like this. So we're starting with a B plus ion gaseous, and it's going to be two plus gaseous plus the electron. And the delta H is plus, remember it's endothermic, 2427.1 kilojoules per mole. After the second ionization energy comes the third, so that's the energy required to remove a mole of electrons from a mole of gaseous two plus ions. There's my picture for that. Five protons, but only three electrons, leaves a two plus charge. So the equation for that would be B two plus gas goes to B three plus gas plus the electron. And the enthalpy change for that process is plus 3659.7 kilojoules per mole. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this now, so I'll kind of speed up a little bit. So the fourth ionization energy is gonna come next. So that's the energy required to remove a mole of electrons from a mole of gases three plus ions. There's my picture from a three plus ion. So the equation is going to be B three plus gas going to be four plus gas. Oops, I missed the plus there. Uh, plus the electron. And the enthalpy change for that process is 25025.8. So delta H plus 25025.8 kilojoules per mole. And you'll be pleased to hear that this is the last one for boron because obviously it's only got five electrons, so it's got five ionization energies. There's the definition for that process. 
And I'll quickly write up the equation for that. So we're starting with B4 plus gas going to B5 plus gas plus the electron. And the delta H for that is plus 328.26.7 kilojoules per mole. So now we've looked at those five processes for boron, we just need to try and make sense of what the, the numbers are saying. So the first point I want to make is that successive ionization energies, so that's the first, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and the fifth in the case of boron, they always show an increase. So it always takes more and more energy each time you remove that mole of electrons. So the first explanation we can give is that the proton to electron ratio in the species is actually increasing each time. So in the first ionization energy, you're starting off with the neutral atom. So you've got a one to one um, proton to electron ratio. So you've got five of each in the case of boron, but it's one to one. And as you start removing the electrons each time, you can see that that proton to electron ratio is increasing. So when you get to the last one for boron, you've got five protons attracting just that one remaining electron. Another factor you could talk about is the charge of the species. So when you start with the atom, the charge of the species is zero. And then you've got the one plus ion, then the two plus, then the three plus, and the four plus. So as the species becomes increasingly more positive, it's obviously going to have a greater attraction for the remaining electrons. And the third factor you could talk about is the radius of the species. So hopefully you can see from the diagrams, they're actually, these are getting smaller. So the largest is the atom and the smallest one in the case of boron is the four plus ion. So as the species gets smaller and smaller, the electrons remaining are closer and closer to the nucleus. And so therefore obviously they're gonna be more strongly attracted as a result. So what's the upshot of those three things? The nuclear attraction on the electrons is increasing. So it takes more and more energy to remove them. And the final thing I want to look at is how you can use the successive ionization energies for an atom to identify what group on the periodic table it belongs to. So in the table, I've got just two random atoms, P and Q, and their first eight ionization energies and straight away you can see that the both of them are showing that general increase in their ionization energies so if we have a look a bit more closely at p you can see that between the second and the third ionization energy there's a significant increase in energy and that's because or what that's telling us is that these two electrons here must be in um, a different shell to these ones here because it's taken a significant increase in energy to get this third um, electron out. And then if we look at Q you can see the significant increase is between the fifth and the sixth so it's gone 6270 to 21,270 so that's a big jump up in energy so that means that these five electrons here they must all be in an outer shell and the sixth electron is in a shell closer to the nucleus. So the data is telling us that P must be in group two and Q must be in group five. So if we just finish the video by linking all this back to boron, since I, that was the atom I used to explain everything. So you can see I've got my five ionization energies for boron. I've just color coded them to indicate which electron I'm referring to. So the pink one, removal of that electron there, the blue one, that one, and so on. So obviously we know that boron's in group three, and you can see how that's backed up by these numbers here. So we've got this large increase in ionization energy between the third and the fourth. So what's the cause for that large increase in energy? It's because the electron in the inner shell experiences greater nuclear attraction, significantly greater nuclear attraction, because it's experiencing less electron shielding. 
So these three outer electrons, the attraction between them and the nucleus, is shielded by the inner shell. This electron and that one, they don't have any shielding actually in the case of boron because there's no inner shell. So they experience a significantly greater attraction from the nucleus as a result of that. And that's the reason for this large increase.